Trance Channel here for our daily Course in Miracles lesson together. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today we are doing lesson number 137, When I am Healed, I am not healed alone. Today's idea remains the central thought on which salvation rests, for healing is the opposite of all the world's ideas which dwell on sickness and on separate states. Sickness is a retreat from others and a shutting off of joining. It becomes a door that closes on a separate self and keeps it isolated and alone. Sickness is isolation, for it seems to keep oneself apart from all the rest to suffer what the others do not feel. It gives the body final power to make the separation real and keep the mind in solitary prison split apart and held in pieces by a solid wall of sickened flesh which it cannot surmount. The world obeys the laws that sickness serves, but healing operates apart from them. It is impossible that anyone be healed alone. In sickness must be apart <clears throat> in sickness must he be apart and separate, but but healing is his own decision to be one again and to accept his self with all its parts intact and unassailed. In sickness does his self appear to be dismembered and without the unity that gives it life. But healing is accomplished as he sees the body has no power to attack the universal oneness of God's Son. Sickness would prove that lies must be the truth, but healing demonstrates that truth is true. The separation sickness would impose has never really happened. To be healed is merely to accept what always was the simple truth and always will remain exactly as it has forever been. Yet eyes accustomed to illusions must be shown that what they look upon is false. So healing, never needed by the truth, must demonstrate that sickness is not real. Healing might thus be called a counter-dream, which cancels, cancels out the dream of sickness in the name of truth, but not in truth itself. Just as forgiveness overlooks all sins that never were accomplished, healing but removes illusions that have not occurred. Just as the real world will arise to take the place of what has never been at all, healing but offers restitution for imagined states and false ideas which dreams embroider into pictures of the truth. Yet think not healing is unworthy of your function here, for Antichrist becomes more powerful than Christ to those whose dream the world is real. The body seems to be more solid and more stable than the mind, and love becomes a dream, while fear remains the one reality that can be seen and justified and fully understood. Just as forgiveness shines away all sin and the real world will occupy the place of what you made, so healing must replace the fantasies of sickness which you hold before the simple truth. When sickness has been seen to disappear in spite of all the laws that hold, it cannot but be real. Then questions have been answered, and the laws can be no longer cherished nor obeyed. Healing is freedom, for it demonstrates that dreams will not prevail against the truth. Healing is shared, and by this attribute it proves the laws, unlike the ones which hold that sickness is inevitable, are more potent than their sickly opposites. Healing is strength, for by its gentle hand is weakness overcome, and minds that were walled off within a body, free to join with other minds, to be forever strong. Healing, forgiveness, and the glad exchange of all the world of sorrow for a world where sadness cannot enter, are the means by which the Holy Spirit urges you to follow him. His gentle lessons teach how easily salvation can be yours, how little practice you need undertake to let his laws replace the ones you made to hold yourself a prisoner to death. His life becomes your own as you extend the little help he asks in freeing you from everything that ever caused you pain. And as you let yourself be healed, you see all those around you or who cross your mind or whom you touch or those who seem to have no contact with you healed along with you. Perhaps you will not recognize them all, nor realize how great your offering to all the world when you let healing come to you. But you are never healed alone, and legions upon legions will receive the gift that you receive when you are healed. Those who are, those who are healed become the instruments of healing, nor does time 
nor does time elapse between the instant they are healed and all the grace of healing it is given them to give. What is opposed to God does not exist, and who accepts it not within his mind becomes a haven, where the weary can remain, can remain to rest, for here is truth bestowed, and here are all illusions brought to truth. Would you not offer shelter to God's will? You but invite yourself to be at home, and can this invitation be refused? Ask the inev inevitable to occur, and you will never fail. The other choice is but to ask what cannot be true, and this cannot succeed. Today we ask that only truth will occupy our minds, that thoughts of healing will this day go forth from what is healed to what must yet be healed, aware they will both occur as one. We will remember as the hour strikes, our function is to let our minds be healed, that we may, car that we may carry healing to the world, exchanging curse for blessing, pain for joy, and separation for the peace of God. Is not a minute of the hour worth the giving to receive a gift like this? Is not a little time a small expense to offer for the gift of everything? Yet must we be prepared for such a gift, and so we will begin the day with this and give ten minutes to these thoughts, which we will conclude today at night as well. When I am healed, I am not healed alone, and I would share my healing with the world, that sickness may be banished from the mind of God's one Son, who is my only self. Let healing be through you this very day, and as you rest in quiet, be prepared to give as you receive, to hold but what you give, and to receive the word of God, to take the place of all the foolish thoughts that ever were imagined. Now we come together to make well all that was sick, and offer blessing where there was attack. Nor will we let this function be forgot, as every hour of the day slips by, remembering our purpose with this thought. When I am healed, I am not healed alone, and I would bless my brothers, for I would be healed with them, as they are healed with me. And that is our lesson for today, uh, number 137, When I am healed, I am not healed alone. Let's see what Jesus has to say to us today. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know as Jesus and healing is one of the great mysteries of your world. You have been indoctrinated into the physical material beliefs of your scientific method and so healing in the way that is transpiring when you practice forgiveness does not make sense because in the Western medical tradition, it is the body that rules. The body is the one that causes dysfunction. It seems to go randomly wrong for no reason and try to kill you. Uh, that is the basis on which Western medicine is based, that the body is the be-all and end-all. This is why they don't ask you uh, about your feelings. This is why doctors don't ask you about your diet. They are going to the effect, which is the body, the end result, and, and deeming it cause. When you are looking at things correctly, the mind is the cause and the body is the effect. So to heal the body, you must heal the mind. It is that simple. That is the truth. That is how it goes. And this is why in Western medicine, you are merely suppressing symptoms with pharmaceutical drugs and you are seeing the consequences of it over the last few decades. You are seeing a society that is getting sicker and sicker and the side effects of those drugs have nothing to do with health or healing. You are literally poisoning your bodies. And so healing as described here in this particular lesson is something that is from a transformation of mind. And when you transform your mind, you transform the projector that produces everything that you are experiencing as your life. And that is really what a miracle is. It is a change of mind, a choice to choose love instead of fear that precipitates a random or seemingly random event outside of you to shift and change. And that can be your body as well. But it can also be the bodies of other beings, it can be uh, relationships, it can be all kinds of things outside of your immediate realm of effect, because you are all connected. The Western medicine model says you are all separate. 
So it is, in fact, a device of the ego, ego's thought system because it insists that what you do is completely isolated from everybody else. That body is the creator. That is a materialistic belief, a low 3D belief. And that is why your pharmaceutical industry causes so many deaths because it has nothing to do with healing. True healing always comes from the mind. True healing always comes from the person who is sick in the sense that you must decide that you do not want what sickness offers you. You, don't not, you do not want the isolation that sickness offers you. You do not want the pain that sickness offers you. You must become aware that those are things that you want when you get sick. Uh, those are unconscious desires that must be addressed. Now, most of you would say, oh, no, those are not things I want. When I got food poisoning in Mexico, I did not want to suffer so. But we will say to you, it is a match to some of your beliefs about yourself. It is a match to self-loathing. It is a match to fear. It is a ma match to self uh, mutilation or self-abuse in whatever way that you are participating in it. And so you will find that there is a match somewhere in your frequency. If you look in the mirror and you say that you hate yourself, that is a very, very low frequency. It is the ultimate act of aggression, the ultimate blasphemy, if you will. And many of you in the West have this belief that you are unlovable or you are unattractive and therefore valueless. When you have these kinds of thoughts going through your mind, you will create a sick body. You will create uh, something to punish yourself with because you are not loving yourself. So know that when you heal yourself, you are giving a great gift to the world and your brothers and sisters, not just for you. I am that one that you know is Jesus and I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.